right, so feet are going to be hips distance apart. And what I want to focus on is where the weight is in my foot, right? So if I'm falling forward and I feel like the weight's in the balls of my feet, I want to go ahead and lift those toes up so the weight comes back into the heel. Toes are off the ground for a second, so you can really feel the weight shift back. We're going to have the knees slightly bent, so we don't want to have those knees locked out, right? It's going to push us forward. I'm going to have the weight back in the heels, the knees soft bent, and I'm going to tuck the tailbone underneath me so I don't have an anterior pelvic tilt. So I'm going to tuck in the tailbone. Chest is up nice and tall. We're going to tuck the chin as we tuck the chin. We want to reach C7 back, so it's our biggest uh, neck vertebrae. One way that you can feel that is you can put a hand on the back of your neck. Big bump. So as we go into flexion, you're going to feel a big bump. This is going to be a bump on top. So you're going to have two fingers. One on what we think is C7, the biggest one, and one above it. What we're going to do is we're going to come back into extension, lift the neck up. The one above it should slide back like a step ladder, and then you'll feel C7 there. All right? It's usually where a lot of people have that bump, that rib hump, if they're really rounded. It's usually where that be. So as you tuck the chin, you want to try to reach that guy to the back wall. And then as we do that, we're going to push the crown of the head into the ceiling, and we're trying to grow through the crown of the head. So I'm thinking about my whole body, front back of the ribcage, elevating up towards the ceiling, trying to create space for the vertebral column. Okay, so hands by the side, tucking the tailbone, chins tucked, we're pushing the crown of the head into the ceiling. We're going to go into a march. So I'm going to lift my knee, point my toe. As we go into a march, keep marching. I'm just going to fix this so you can see my feet a little bit. So as I'm lifting, as I go through my foot, as I lift my knee, I'm pointing my toe to the floor. Right? Uh, basically initiating just a full gait cycle. What's up, Tao? How are we doing? Oh, all right. Making sure the weight's still in the heels, right? Tailbone's still tucked, chin is still tucked, reaching the neck back, pushing the crown of the head into the ceiling, and breathing in and out through the diaphragm. All right, we might stop breathing and try to think about all these points, but just try to bring your awareness to your breath. We're going to try to deep breathe in and out through the diaphragm and just bring our awareness back to those spots if we feel like we're coming out. All right, we're going to start reaching our hands into the ceiling. Nice little pumps to warm the shoulder girdle up, wrists over the elbows. Chin up. Now we're going to go all the way into the ceiling, all the way down, all the way up, keeping the tuck of the tailbone. Keeping the chin tucked, pushing that crown of the head into the ceiling. Breathing nice and deep in and out through the diaphragm. Rolling through those feet, pointing the toe as we lift the knee. And shoe bubble down. All right, hands are going to go out in front of us. Keeping the elbows in line with the shoulders, wrists in line with the elbows. Big chest as we pull back. We don't want the neck to jump forward as we do this. We want to keep that neck nice and tall. Arms moving around the body. Right. Hands are going to go out in line with the shoulders, elbows in, straight out. Chin's tucked, we're pushing the crown of the head into the ceiling. Breathing nice and deep, weights in the heels, tailbones tucked. Rolling through the crown of the head, front and back of that ribcage is elevating towards the ceiling. If you start to feel fatigue, take deeper breaths. Focus on that breath in and out. Oh, relax those hands, let them swing by the sides, nice and free. We get some blood in there. All right, we're going to pick the march up just a bit. Tuck in the chin, triple chin position, pushing that neck back to the back wall, crown the head to the ceiling. We're going to put all of those movements together. We're going to go overhead, forward, and side. Okay, so we'll go three, two, one, overhead, forward, side, side. Overhead, 
Three, two, one. And we'll slowly relax or march. How are you guys feeling there? All right, cool. All right, next. We're gonna have our feet together, hips distance apart. Same nice tall gravity line. My hands are gonna go YMCA. I'm gonna externally rotate my hands. Wrists are back, palms are reaching towards the ceiling. Okay, we're gonna pick up one foot, knee in line with the hip, I'm gonna tap my toe, but I'm keeping my tailbone tucked when I tap my toe, I don't wanna go into a hinge. I wanna keep my toes, my hips there, squeezing my glute, and then I come back into the motion, okay? So knee in line with the hip, we'll pick up, keeping that tailbone tucked, squeezing the glute, tapping the toe, back up, chin's tucked, pushing that crown of the head into the ceiling, breathe. Front and back of that rib cage, elevate up, Shoulders reach, hands reach. Squeezing that glute, feeling the glute contraction as we tap the toe. That's where we want the mind. Triple chin position, long neck, pushing C7 behind us. Three, two, one. We're gonna hold the knee in the air. We're gonna sweep the floor, rotating the ankle around the knee, internal, external rotation of the hip joint, sweeping the floor, three, two, one, we'll slowly relax the leg back down, relax those hands for a second, shake them out, all right, other side, go ahead and set our hands, external rotation, slight reach of those shoulder blades into the ceiling following the hands, tailbone's tucked, go ahead and switch other sides, tap the toe, squeeze the glute, Back up, tap the toe, squeeze the glute. Still triple chin position, pushing that neck behind us, elongating the crown of the head into the ceiling. Breathe. Front and back of the rib cage, elevating up towards the ceiling, pushing that crown of the head up. Three. Two, one, slowly relax. All right, how's everyone feeling on that? All right, cool. So next one here, rib cage translation. I wanna get my feet as wide and shoulder width apart. Internal rotation of the feet, so pigeon toed. My knees are bent and same thing. My weight's back in the heels, my tailbone's tucked. I'm up nice and tall. Chin's tucked, neck's back. We're pushing the crown of the head into the ceiling. All right, arms are gonna come out in line with the shoulder blades. We're gonna externally rotate, so elbow creases are gonna face up towards the ceiling. Wrists are back, fingers are splayed, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reach over to the side. We're trying to push something over, over. And so we're keeping the hips nice and right where we are. We're using the lumbar spine to translate over. So think about pushing the rib cage. I wanna try to keep my upper body as tall as possible. Trying to not bend over yet. Push it over. Keeping the tuck of the tailbone, bending those knees, weight back in the heels. All right, at the end of the translation, we're gonna add a windmill. So I translate, I'm gonna inhale, look up at my hands, try to push the air out from the rib cage, come back up, translate over. Inhale, push that rib cage out, come back up. One more on each side. One. Two. All right. Very good job, guys. Next, I'm going to bring you guys down to the floor. And so, what I'm trying to do with this is we're trying to bring back the flexion of the lumbar spine. All right, it's something that we we sit a lot passively in flexion when we're sitting down in the chair, stuff like that, but we're not able to physically bring ourselves, control ourselves into flexion. So this is designed to help bring us back into flexion. We've got lumbar pain, lumbar spine pain. This is something you should do just right as you get up. 
in the morning. So I'm going to have my feet out in front of me. My knees are going to be at 90 degrees. I'm trying to reach my arch to the floor. I'm trying to touch my mid arch to the floor. It won't touch, okay? Just trying to reach that, solidify it to the ground. You can also lift your big toe. That's going to help that arch start to depress to the floor, okay? I'm going to sit up nice and tall. Hands are on my knees. I'm going to go ahead, exhale, tuck my tailbone, push my belly button behind me. I'm just trying to round the spine just a little bit. I have all the weight on my knees and I can heal up. Arch to the floor, knees at 90, tuck the tailbone, trying to lift the signal on the ground. Up. I'm trying not to round the, the thoracic spine. I want to keep that nice and tall, just from the lower spine. It's just a pumping movement. It's going to help hydrate those tissues that don't move often. It'll help bring control back to the central nervous system, right? So it's going to tell the body, I want to keep this movement. All right, one more. I want to come back up. I'm going to take my hands off now. All right, now we're going to actively use our core. So what's going to happen? I'm going to take a deep breath in. I'm going to do the opposite of the breathing now. So I'm going to breathe in. I'm going to hold my breath. I'm going to tuck my tailbone. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to control as much as I can. Meaning wherever my feet want to come off the ground, or I lose the core tension, I want to come right to that spot. So I'm going to control. Sit right here. One second hold. Roll back up on the spine. So I'm tucking the tailbone, letting it sink on the ground one vertebrae at a time. And then I'm rolling up into extension. Okay, we're going to do 10 of these guys. Hey, right. Jeff. Uh, can you explain the um, breathing like real quick? For this one, you want the core braced. So before we have our hands on our knees, it's going to take a lot of weight off the core. So we were kind of breathing and working with the body mechanics and breathing and the way that the body extends and flexes. Now I want to work the core strength-wise. So I'm going to take a deep breath in. I'm going to hold that air through the whole time. So I hold, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, come up, exhale. Thank you. Yeah, and then we create that inhale. All right, up nice and tall, chin sunk, we're still pushing back around the head of the ceiling, arms around the front, externally rotated, we're going to tuck the chin, tucking that tailbone as much as we can, finding that spot. One second, hold back up, one. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Oh, yeah. Get it. Eight. Nine. One more. We're going to do a five second hold at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Back up. All right. How's everyone feeling with those? All right, if you have any back pain on those, you need to tuck your tailbone more and then just lessen the amount that you're going down. Right, yeah, I was feeling my lower back on that one. Yeah, you got to really tuck the tailbone. Okay. And then just, because uh, if not, the body's going to want to tend to do a hip flexor setup. So if I keep my body at 90 degrees and I'm working like this, but I'm working my hip flexor, which attaches to the lumbar spine. Right, so I can easily be hurting that spine. I want to be able to flex it around. So all I'm doing is tucking the tailbone and coming back up. So for you, I just I would really, I would lower and re, uh, restrict the range of motion just a little bit and focus on the tucking right off that initial gate, and maybe even just working with the hands for a while. Right. All right. Next thing we're going to get into is we're going to get into the hip flexor stretch 
All right, we're gonna do three on each side. We're gonna hold the stretch for about 30 seconds, and then we're gonna hold it for about another 15 seconds out of the stretch. Okay, so this might be a strengthening exercise for you guys. You might really feel it in the supporting leg while we're just holding it, right? But we're focusing on the side that's stretching it down, okay? So with this, So with this stretch, what I like to do is I like to just be in a double knee position to get into it. Um, so one foot's gonna come up. Very important that the knee is greater than 90 degrees here because we're gonna move into a 90 degree position, okay? My back knee is directly underneath my hip, right? So I'm not out into a lunge position. The knee is a direct straight vertical line with the hip, okay? And the ankle, is outside of the knee, right? Just about, if you had a mirror straight in front of you, you'd be able to see it on that outside angle. It's gonna cause a little bit of internal rotation of the down hip. Okay. My hips are in one line, I also wanna make sure that one side's not hiking. Right? It's very, uh, it's usually gonna do that when you get into a one-legged, a one a knee position. So we wanna make sure both hips are in height in line with one another, belt buckles facing forward. And we're gonna do an initial tuck of the tailbone here to feel tension coming down from the mid thigh. I'm gonna do the hip flexor. Now what I'm gonna do here, I tuck the tailbone, I've got initial tension, I wanna hold that tension through this movement. So I'm tucking the tailbone the whole time. I'm gonna move the pelvis slightly away from the down knee, and the knee is gonna come forward over the ankle, okay? So I've now moved the pelvis to the side and forward. So that back knee is now behind the pelvis. And I'm separating both knees with a good tension here. A lot of people in the hip flexor stretch, they're up, they're flared. They don't want to be like that. Those ribs down. Pushing the hip away, I'm going to come down on my torso. So my torso is forward here. My ribs are still aligned with my uh, pelvis. I'm going to tuck my chin, reach the C7 back towards the wall, and push the front of the head to the ceiling. Now, I'm going to try tucking the tailbone as much as I can here in this position, thinking about flexing the lumbar spine, just like we did in the roll-up, roll-down. I'm trying to round my spine right here. But it might be hard because the hip flexor is tight. All right, so we're just talking about rounding, tucking the spine, pushing the belly button up into the ceiling. Same side arm is going to reach out, externally rotated. It's going to help increase tension through the fascial system. We want the arm in line with the shoulder, so not out to the side. In line, straight forward. Continually tucking the tailbone. Now, if you feel, if you keep tension, you can reach the other arm up. Same thing as the other hand, that's fine. If you do this and lose tension, I want you to bring that arm back and focus on the tuck of the tailbone and feeling tension on the top of that hip. Three, two, one. We'll slowly relax our stretch. We'll push out and we'll just go back to the beginning. All right, anybody got any questions on that? All right. So we'll just take a couple seconds here. We'll get our breath. All right, we'll go back in. We'll make sure the hips are in one line. Same setup, knees greater than 90, ankle slightly outside of that down knee, down knee in line with the hip, we're gonna tuck the tailbone. Initial tension, we're gonna hold, we're gonna push the pelvis away from the down knee, knee's gonna come over the ankle, separating both knees with good tension, like you're trying to drive those guys away from each other, really hard. They're coming down on the torso, continually tucking the tailbone and pushing that belly button up into the ceiling. Like you're trying to flatten your whole low back into a weight belt. You ever had a weight belt on or any kind of belt? We're just trying to flatten the whole back around the rim of that belt. Same side arm will reach, external rotation, pull that wrist back, fingers splay, chin's tucked, we're pushing that crown of the hip to the ceiling. If you can hold tension and find good tension in the hip, we'll reach to the other side. Three, two, one. We'll slowly relax. We'll straighten out. A couple of breaths here. How's everyone feeling? Good. Is that supporting leg burning a little bit? Hold you guys up. All right. We'll go back into the stretch. Again, making sure hips are in one line. Knees greater than 90. Back knee underneath the hip and the ankle outside of that knee. All right, we're going to tuck the tailbone, initial tension coming through that mid thigh. 
I'm gonna go ahead and push that pelvis away from the down knee. Front knee is gonna set and go over uh, the toes there, bringing the knee to 90 degrees. We're gonna come down, separating both knees with good tension. Ribs and hinges together, chin's tucked, we're pushing the crown of the head to the ceiling. Same side on the reach, we tuck the tailbone, push the belly button behind us. And if you can hold this position, then both arms reach out, chin's tucked. But if that brings tension off of that hip and you can't tuck, I wanna keep the hand here. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax. Does everyone feel this uh, stretch in the front of the hip there? All right, cool. Because if you're not, that's an issue, all right? Uh, it, it really comes down to just, the, again, the tucking of the tailbone and the pelvis, all right? Which over time, you're gonna gain a huge awareness of, right? One day you'll just be like, oh, man, I can, I can tuck it. It's much easier. All right, other side. So we're getting to our double knee position. I'm going to go ahead and bring my other front foot out, thigh about 45 degrees off the pubic synthesis off the pelvis. Uh, the knee greater than 90 in the front here. Back knee underneath the hip, ankle is slightly outside that knee, causing internal rotation of the down knee and the down hip. I've got my hips in one line, making sure they're not rotated the wrong way. Well, buckles forward. We're going to go ahead and tuck the tailbone here. We're going to feel the initial tension, that hip flexor. We're going to push the hip away from the down knee. Front knee is going to come over the ankle here, separating both knees with good tension. All right, we're going to come down onto the knee so the torso comes forward, taking weight basically off the spine so I can tuck more, push that belly button behind me, drive that knee behind me more, tuck the tailbone more, push that front knee forward more. Chin's tucked, we're pushing that crown of the head to the ceiling. Externally rotating the same side arm, wrist back, fingers splayed, elbow crease faces the ceiling. Chin's tucked and we're pushing the crown of the head to the ceiling. Front and back of the ribcage, elevate. And breathe nice and deep through the diaphragm. The psoas and the diaphragm have a direct correlation. Usually if we have dysfunction in one, we'll have dysfunction in the other. So really try to push from that diaphragm. Uh, over time, you can really start to feel it push up higher on the spine, which is where we really want to stretch this guy. Slowly relax. So like when I'm breathing and I'm usually training my clients, like I'll have a dowel or a PVC pipe on their stomach after they kind of understand the stretch. And I'll stand from the side and I'll have them push into the PVC pipe. All right, so you can do that with your hand. If you're doing with the just the one-handed reach when I get into a position, right? I'm gonna use that hand and I'm just gonna put a thumb in the middle of my bread basket, my solar plexus, and I'm just gonna push into it and I'm gonna try to breathe as hard as I can. So you're gonna get into the stretch, boom, at the end of the stretch is for right when we're at that very end of the stretch where all the tension is. I want you guys to start pushing and breathing the diaphragm into here. And I want you to feel if you can start to feel the stretch up higher, right? Because the psoas comes from very high up Right underneath the diaphragm comes down and then oh, okay, camera down in, right? So it's like a little triangle. Oh, other way. Little triangle. There we go. There we go. A little triangle. All right. So it pulls everything down. All right. Other side. Oh, same side, sorry. All right. So knees greater than 90, back knees underneath the hip, hips are in one line, ankles slightly outside of that knee. All right, we're going to tuck the tailbone, get initial tension coming down the middle of the spine. We're going to push the pelvis away from the down knee, front knee is going to come over the ankle, separating both knees with good tension here, okay? Coming down, still separating, growing through the crown of the head, breathing, tucking the tailbone as much as we can, trying to push the belly button to the spine, or into the ceiling, sorry. Same side arm will reach here. I'm going to push my thumb into my diaphragm. And I'm going to start breathing as deep as I can, pushing the diaphragm into that finger. And exhaling, tuck as much as you can and breathe as hard as you can. 
See if you can stretch from those two points. Three, two, one. We'll slowly relax the arm. Go ahead and push off the foot, coming back to our starting position. Did anyone feel a different stretch? Breathing deep through the diaphragm? All right, that's what we want. Okay. You can start to feel that we're stretching from here to here. So I'm moving the bottom portion away. I'm trying to grow through the top and breathe and pull. Okay, so we're trying to go through two different here. All right, last one. Again, everything. Knee underneath the hip. Knees greater than 90. Ankles slightly outside of that knee. Okay. If your toes, you guys can't see my toes because I suck at the camera today. Uh, if they're open, right, like if my toes are open like this, that would, that's a no. Okay. Wherever my feet go, my pelvis goes. So as I opened up now, now my belt buckle is facing this way. I want it to face forward. So I need those toes closed to keep the pelvis, the belt buckle straight forward, okay? All right, we're gonna push the pelvis away from the down knee, moving that knee to 90, separating both knees with good tension here. We'll come down onto the knee, chins tucked, pushing C7 back into the ceiling so we have that long neck, pushing the crown of the head into the ceiling and breathing in and out through the diaphragm. Same side on the reach, thumb is into the diaphragm, and we're breathing. We'll keep breathing, keep reaching, tucking that tailbone, separating both knees with good tension. Three, two, one, slowly relax. So, literally what we're doing with these stretches is over time, the elasticity of the fascia becomes, it, it becomes very fibrotic and it doesn't move, right? So if we have all of these tissues and things that don't move, they start to cause a lot of pain. All of these stretches are designed to pull the fascia around these muscles to then allow them to become more elastic, right? So they're not compressing, they're not causing pain, right? All right, next we're going to get on the ground. We're going to go through a figure four stretch. So the low back's on the ground, ribs are down, chin is tucked. We're going to go ahead and cross the ankle over the knee. I'm going to go ahead and push that knee back from my face. I want to grab the thigh, pull towards my face as I push the cross knee away. So equal and opposite tension, I pull in one leg and I'm pushing that knee away. So I should feel a stretch around the cross leg glute. Ankles are at 90 degrees and we have the ankles slightly deeper, meaning the outside is reaching up towards the side of the knee. Chin is tough, trying to flatten the seats over to the floor. Slowly relax the leg. You don't want the ankle to fly off of the knee. Go ahead and bring that leg to the ground or cross the other knee over the ankle. And pull the knee, sorry. We'll drive the knee towards the face, making sure the pelvis does not hit height. So one side does not drop, it stays nice and even. I'm going to pull one thigh in as I push the other thigh away. And then ankles are at 90, slight inversion. Chin's tucked, we reach up to C7 to the floor, triple chin position. Push the crown the head away from the tailbone. Slowly relax. All right, we're going to do one more. 
Cross the other side. And you over the knee. We're going to grab that thigh, bring it towards the chest, push it across the knee away with equal and opposite tension. Deep breath, not holding the breath. Chin is tucked and reaching, C center to the floor. Push the neck around the head away. Eyes are open, looking down the body. Slowly relax, let the vehicle fly off the knee. Go ahead and switch to the other side. Angle over the knee. We're going to go ahead and grab the thigh. Pull the knee to the chest as we push across the knee away with equal opposite tension. Making sure the hips stay on the ground, both stay in one line. Chin is tucked. We're going to reach the center of the floor, push the crown of the head away. Eyes are open, looking down the body to deal with the deepest layer of the fascia. Slowly relax there. Make you guys back up into a double knee position. Um, what I would do for this one is I would maybe double up your mat here. We're going to have the inside of the knee flat to the ground. Some of those tendons can be a little tight. And when we lay on them, it hurts. And then we think our knee has an issue, but really it's just a patch tension issue. Because the knee bone is stupid. It's just, a, it's just a bone that lays inside of a tendon. It doesn't do shit. It, it's really dumb. But... Maybe double up the mat, whatever. But what I like to do for this guy, depending on what kind of floor you're on, if you're on a hardwood floor, I would definitely double or triple up. But I want to have my knee at the top of the mat, at the very crest, so I can use the whole width of the mat, so I can have my whole shin and the inside of my foot on some padding. Okay? Now. Again, just from the double knee position, I'll start obviously with one of my knees at the very top. I'm going to take a big step to the side. Now, it's very important to take this big step to the side to get the pelvis moving. If the body might stop you too because the adductors are tight. It's just something we're going to have to kind of overcome and be like, no, body, we're going to do this, okay? So I'm going to step to the side and I'm trying to have my knee and the heel of the front leg in one line. Now, if you're extremely tight, it might be hard. So you can have the knee slight, or the heel slightly in front of the knee. So, when I'm moving over, I'm moving the hip enough to where I can get the inside of the heel of the back leg into the floor. Now for a lot of you, the heel might be up like this. I just want you guys to rotate it to wherever it stops, but I'm trying to get the inside of that malleolus, the ankle, into the floor. Okay, keeping that knee at 90. This knee is at 92. I want to make sure both hips are in one line. Now, what we're going to do from this position, I'm driving the inside of the ankle into the floor. I'm going to move the pelvis away from the down knee, but I'm not going to sag. I want to stay up nice and tall, keep the hips in one line, driving those hips over with good tension, and now I'm going to tuck the tailbone. So I should feel a stretch coming across the front of the hip, like a band of the down knee. Ribs and hips together, you want to make sure the hips are underneath you, they're not back. So make sure you got those hips pushed underneath you. Ribs are above, we're going to tuck the chin, push the crown of the head into the ceiling. One arm at a time, externally rotates, we reach in front of us, and we're going to continually drive that pelvis away from the down knee, pushing the inside of the foot into the floor and tucking the tailbone. Those three tensions, heel, Driving the pelvis away and tucking. All right, we're continually trying to stretch this little pectineous adductor muscle. Breathing nice and deep into the diaphragm, pushing that crown of the head into the ceiling. Keep breathing, keep reaching that pelvis away, keep tucking that tailbone. Three, two, one, we'll slowly relax. How's that feeling for everybody there? 
Good. That one's kind of rough. All right. Intent. It was intense. Yeah. 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 I can feel really tight. But it's an adductor that can't get stretched really in the traditional fashion. So this one's really important. I right, really can mess with the hip, in flare and out flare. All right. Other side. Again, from the double knee position, we're going to take that wide step out, allowing the pelvis to travel with us. The down knee is at 90, inside of the foot is flat to the ground. Hips are forward, 90 degrees in this top leg here. Toes are facing forward, and the heel, the down knee and the heel are trying to be in one line as best as we can. Okay? Hips are in one line, we're going to tuck the tailbone. We're going to start driving the, the pelvis away from the hip in a nice straight line, continually tucking. Chin's tucked, we're going to push that crown head to the ceiling. One arm at a time, externally rotated, slight reach to those shoulders. Chin's tucked, and we're going to push that crown head to the ceiling. Big breaths into the diaphragm, continually pushing the inside of that foot into the ground, tucking the tailbone and driving the pelvis away from the knee. Three, two, one. Slow relax. Come back into our double knee position. We'll go to our other side. We'll take that wide step over. Down knee at 90, inside of the foot, follow the ground. Top knee is at 90, hips are in one line. Toes facing forward. Pelvis is elbow is facing forward. We're going to tuck the tailbone as much as we can. We're going to drive those hips away from the down knee. Inside of that foot pushes into the floor. External rotation of both arms, chins tucked, reaching C7 back. Breathing deep into the diaphragm, pushing the crown of the head into the ceiling. Front and back of that rib cage, elevate. Three, two, one, slowly relax. All right, last one here, okay? I'll give you guys a couple seconds. Breathe it out. All right. Last one, all right? I want you guys to tug as much as you can. Try to really get into this guy. Really use your breath as well. Like if you have a cramp, if your stuff feels really tight, start working with your breath because the body's going to stop breathing. It just it does what it does. You want to keep breathing as deep as you can and keep trying to contract as hard as you can. Okay, we're trying to go to max contraction while also trying to relax. Right, it's a little bit yoga-esque. Right? I'm trying to activate the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system in these hard and very sympathetic postures. So I'm really trying. The body's really shaking. I want to try to bring that back down. Right. Okay. Last one. We're going to go ahead and step far to the left. So the way you guys did last time. Far step over. Bottom knees at 90. Inside of that foot squat to the floor. Hips are in one line. I've got my top knee at 90. Inside of that foot facing the uh, forward. Ribs and hips are together. We're going to start growing through that back knee inside of the foot, flat to the floor. We're tucking the chin, pushing that crown of the head into the ceiling. One arm at a time externally rotates. Oh, we try to tuck the tailbone as much as we can as we drive the pelvis away from the down knee, and pushing the inside of the foot, flat to the floor. Front and back of the rib cage, elevate to the ceiling. Breathing, following the breath, using the breath, inhaling. Push. Bring that crown of the head into the ceiling. Three, two, one. Slowly lock that guy there. How are we feeling? 
How are the hips feeling? A little loose, a little open, a little jellish, jellyish. All right. So the next one we're going to get into is postures for the lumbar spine. Right. One thing I want you guys to think about during these postures is we're creating a fixed point wherever we're doing. We're creating a fixed point, which is usually the bottom of the body and a moving point, which is usually the top of the body for most of the spine, okay? Um, so as you're in these positions, as we're reaching, right, we're thinking about the spine is elevating up. We're reaching up, we're pushing the crown of the head up into the ceiling as we tuck the chin, reach the neck back, right? Everything we do is constantly with these cues. So over time, this should be something that comes back to you very quickly, right? The tucking of the chin, the reaching of the neck back, chest up, ribs down. Tucking the tailbone, all right? It's something that I consistently come back to. So with the first one, this is L4, L5. What I'm gonna have you guys do is we're gonna sit up as tall as we can. The most important thing here is the setting of the spine, okay? Meaning, I don't wanna be sitting like this. You can see my spine's rounded. But I don't wanna get my spine up. Oh, my God.
Three, two, one. Slow. How's everyone feeling on that? Now, another way to kind of get used to where your spine can be, because on some of these, we can have a tendency to lean back or lean forward and not be straight. You can always use a wall. So as you do this, you get your whole back nice and flat up against a wall or surface, and then you get your legs out in front of you. And you can kind of from there gain an awareness of where your spine needs to be completely flat. So it's just a training tool that you can use with some of these guys, okay? Just to confirm in that one, the, pel the pelvis is kind of neutral. We're not like tilting in or out or anything like that. Yep, you, everything we do, the pelvis is gonna be neutral. Yeah, okay, thank right? you. Unless we start getting into when you're really working with a practitioner where they're really managing an inflare and outflare of one of your pelvises to stretch. Yeah. But I mean, that's when you're getting into like super uh, controlled biomechanics where you've been doing this for a couple of years where you're really now taking and expressing the full fiber arrangement. And it takes a lot of body control. So yeah, for right now, everything is pelvis forward. Okay, thank you. Unless we say like, you know, dump the pelvis forward or back or something like that. All right, cervical spine. So for the cervical spine, we're kind of doing the same thing. We're going, to, we're going to have a lower body movement or pose. It's going to help pull all the fascia down, right? And then the one thing that we need to be doing is tucking the chin, pushing C7 back into the floor so we're elongating the neck. That's the most important part because that's helping us bring back the cervical curve now. When you've seen people on their cell phones are out like this, that the cervical curve has now become straight. Okay, so what we're trying to do is sit up tall, tuck the chin and reach that C7 back so we can bring back the curve of the neck, okay? So on the floor, with the cervical spine position, you're gonna have your low back nice and flat to the floor, ribs are gonna be down, my chin is gonna be tucked. I'm gonna go ahead and bring one knee up to my chest at a time, and I'm gonna keep 90 degrees in my knees. I'm gonna pull my toes towards my face and the side of the ankles, or uh, the, the, yeah, the ankles are gonna even up to the knee. I'm gonna feel tension coming through the side of the chin here. And what I wanna do is I wanna pull my knees back until my low back comes off the ground. And then I'm gonna slowly move it back to right where the low back touches the ground. So I can have all of these tissues Max tension. Now we're going to tuck the chin, push that neck into the floor. Eyes are open, looking between the legs. And we're going to start pushing the crown of the head away from the tailbone. If you need to use your fingers to push that crown of the head with your fingers, do that. Ribs are down. Now we're going to bring our hands to the side of the body and let them relax. Shoulders relax into the floor. Chin stays tucked, triple chin position. We're going to swallow five to six times. And then we're going to relax the tongue on the roof of the mouth. And we'll continually tuck the chin and push the crown of the head away with a relaxed face and the tongue relaxed to the roof of the mouth. Now, I'm obviously going to have to talk, so I'm, you should not be able to talk during this, okay? So we swallow, we tuck the chin, I'm going to reach one arm up at the time, external rotation, other arm, external rotation, and I'm reaching the shoulder blades into my back pocket. That's going to pull the pressure away from C7. I'm going to continue to keep tucking my chin, pushing C6 away from C7. So I'm externally rotating and reaching away from my ears. Shoulders are reaching away from the ears. Triple chin position as I try to flatten my neck to the floor, push the ground the head away. Tongue's relaxed to the roof of the mouth. My face is relaxed. And now I'm going to take 10% tension of my head off the floor, but the head will not come off the ground. Continue to tuck and relax that tongue to the roof of the mouth. Three, two, one. How'd that feel for everybody? Right, if you're feeling a lot of tension on the crown of your head, right, we're dealing with the deepest layer 
in the cervical spine that wraps around the head. So if you're feeling that your neck feels like it's spasming or anything like that, that means the cervical diaphragm is extremely weak. All right, so when we tuck the chin, we get elongated, and I tell you to take 10% of your head off the floor, right? The cervical diaphragm is now working. It's like the core. Yes. So when you start to feel that, we swallow to fatigue these muscles here. So if you start to feel like it's really spasming, swallow, swallow, put the tongue to your roof of the mouth, and have your, try to have a completely relaxed face, all right? That's going to help relax all those muscles around there and really just focus on the deep neck flexors. Okay, but all we're doing is we're just holding that straight neck position and just thinking about like someone sliding a piece of paper underneath our head. It's a very slight lift, okay? Next one, same position. The only thing that's gonna change are the hands. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and bring our knees right back to that position where we found before. We're gonna go ahead and pull the toes in the face, sides of those ankles. We're going to reach towards the knees, root and through down, so the big spine's on the ground. We're going to triple chin position. We're going to swallow five or six times. We're going to relax the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Face is nice and relaxed. Triple chin position. Pushing the crown of the head away from the tailbone. We're going to go ahead and reach one arm over our chest at a time. Externally rotating. Wrist back, finger split. We're reaching into the ceiling, but the spine does not come off the ground. Just the shoulders slightly reaching into the ceiling. The mid-spine stays flat. Triple chin position, reaching C7 to the floor, push to the ground the head away. We'll go ahead and take 10% of the head off the ground. We'll push the ground the head away. And triple chin position, reach C7 to the floor, push the ground the head away, pull 10% of the head off the ground. Good job, guys. How'd that feel? Kind of awesome. Awesome. If you start to feel like a rushing feeling in your brain, right, like right in the forehead, and you get up and you start to feel a little dizzy, we're pumping cerebral spinal fluid through the body. So a lot of these, like again, fascial tension gets tight, the fluid can't, it can't move. So in the brain, you got three different layers and a bunch of uh, fluid moves through those layers. So we're able to pull and stimulate those layers to get the cerebral spinal fluid moving and flowing. All right, so next I'm gonna get you guys on the wall. So what I'm gonna have you guys do is we're gonna get the sit bones up against the wall. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get my sit bones flush up against this wall. So equal pressure and tension on each sit bone. And I've got both sides of my SI joint completely flattened to the floor. All right, so this is gonna help us control scoliosis up the spine and help normalize the pelvis structure, right? The rotation and height. So I wanna slightly be pushing those sit bones into the wall, and I'm trying to push my whole spine towards the wall. Sacrum, I'm pushing into the floor, my ribs are down. Now, we're gonna swallow five or six times. Triple chin position as we reach the neck to the floor. 
Keeping that low back on the floor, pushing the crown of the head away from the sit bones, sit bones away from the crown of the head. We're going to internally rotate the legs at the thighs. We're going to push the knees away. It's going to help stimulate the side of the hips, and we're going to pull the toes back towards the face. Sides of those ankles reach up the wall. So we're trying to pull the fascia up the leg, up the wall. Heels reach away. Sit bones towards the wall. Ribs down, triple chin position. Pushing the crown of the head away from the sit bones. Tailbone away from the crown of the head. We're going to go over our chest with one arm at a time, externally rotating, externally rotating. And now we're going to go over our head. And now we're reaching away. Front and back of the rib cage, elevate. Pushing the crown of the head away. Crown of the head reaches away, triple chip position. Eyes are open, looking down the thighs. Pulling those toes back towards the face. Making sure the sacred stays on the ground. Three, two, one, we'll slowly relax our knees just a bit. We want to keep our low back nice and flat into the floor, ribs down, and chin slightly tucked. I'm going to have you guys sit here for about five or ten minutes, and then you guys can pop off the wall. And I want you guys to focus on deep breathing in and out through the diaphragm, okay? So making sure that that low back stays nice and flat on the ground. Every exhale, you're just thinking about expanding and exhaling, letting that guy completely relax along the floor. Ribs stay down, chin stays down. Knees are slightly bent. And your hands can be on your chest, by your side, over your head, whatever. Whenever you wanna do it. All right, I do this before bed, I'll do about a minute and then I'll just lay there for about 10 minutes reading a book or something, watching TV, whatever. But that's going to help you guys normalize that pelvis structure, especially on an in-flare, out-flare, meaning like when you walk, both of those SI joints move. And when we sit, sometimes we sit in a certain way to where we're constantly like in in-flare, out-flare, meaning the sacrum is in rotation, and that travels up the spine and causes scoliosis. And every person will uh, experience that differently when it rotates up the spine through the shoulders, all right? Because there's a little bit of counter rotation that happens in the spine. So, um, it, yeah, it can cause a lot of issues in people differently. So it's very important that we try to normalize that pelvis for everybody so that we can kind of negate that out of the gate, right? So constantly just trying to make sure that the sacrum and the iliums are in one line with one another, structures are aligned. All right, anyone got any questions or anything? No, thank you, Jeff. Oh, thank you. All right, well, you guys have a great day. Uh, tomorrow we got Ryan on a little full body hit. I forget if it's upper or lower. Um, I, I don't know, but it is a TTBC, so total body conditioning with a little focus on either the upper or lower portions. All right, you guys have a great weekend. It's very good to see you guys, or have a great week. I'll see you guys on Friday. Take care.